Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week, I kind of got an update video for you. I'm going to try to get you as quickly as possible up to speed on what's been going on around the place in regards to this square body short bed that I picked up. This thing is in awesome shape for its age, but it requires a lot of work to get this thing to where it's ready for paint. And I want to share with you the steps that I went through, a lot of them anyway, to get this thing to the point that I've got it at. So, thanks for watching guys. Okay, doesn't look too bad. So with anything 35 plus years old, we gotta put some makeup on it to make this thing look good. You know, I'm getting this thing ready for paint. I'm putting truck or automotive makeup, which is body filler in, in my case. And what I'm using here is some short strand fiberglass reinforced filler. And that is used to fill the lowest of the low spots on this damaged bedside here. You can see it was hit right in the body line on the front of this bed and pushed in pretty far. I got it pulled out as good as I can, but yet, you know, there's still some spots that are pretty low. And I'm using this reinforced fiberglass short strand filler to give me a good base so I can build up from that with my lightweight body filler that actually sands good. This stuff sands that I'm using here. <laughs> You ought to try to sand some if you haven't. It really is no fun at all. But this stuff's strong, and that's the reason why I'm using it, is because it'll be a good base for anything that I do on top of it. It won't crack, won't shrink, or at least, you know, in any significant way. So this fiberglass reinforced filler first, then we come back with the lightweight filler and, uh, you know, get our shape, refine our shape. Probably... Now, if I don't get any high spots, that'll be the last of the uh, fiberglass filler. So I'm working this fiberglass filler with an air file, simply because this stuff sands horrible, and this takes some of the work out of it, even though you know, it's kind of hard to hold on to an air file for an hour or so. They, they get tiring as well, but not near as tiring as trying to block this dura glass by hand. Now... This thing being hit right in that body line makes it a tough repair because everybody's eyeballs are going to just glare right down the length of this bed, right down that line. And if it's not straight, you know, it's, it's not straight and people will pick it out. Plus, I've got older brothers that do body work and have done it for a living. And if I don't get it right, then I'm going to have to hear about it forever. So the pressure's on to get this body line back where it should be and get this bedside back flat. You know, they're not the easiest shape to work. Oh, we got three of them out here. There's two on that other feeder over there. Three gray squirrels. So fast forward a little bit. I mean, you guys have seen me sand, you know, a hundred times lately. Got this thing pretty dang close. Not done yet. Just in, I'm like three quarters of the way done with my filler work on this uh, bedside. Anyway, got the base of Duraglass or fiberglass reinforced filler down. And now I've got two skim coats of just lightweight standard easy sanding filler on here just to get my, get my shape and then it'll be ready for priming. Now, as far as a guide coat goes, what I'm going to wipe on here or spray on here in order to tell when I block sand, if I got low or high spots, I'm gonna be using this dry guide coat. Now I've used this before, but I didn't have any until recently I picked up a, a can of it. In the past, I'd used black spray paint, right? You can use that, it's not really suggested. Sprinkle it on, when you sand, it shows you highs and lows. You can buy the spray on guide coat, but it doesn't go very far. A can doesn't seem to last very long. Really, you wouldn't get through a vehicle with a can. You do a body panel or so, 
But if you want something that's going to last like forever, that's the dry guide coat. Super easy to apply. Just comes in like a little thing. This is full of a black powder. I don't know what the powder is. But anyway, you just wipe that on. Probably a little heavy. But you just wipe this on and it goes down in all the little sanding scratches. This is really soft. So it goes down in all the low spots. And when you sand this, you can tell what areas are getting sanded and what areas are not getting sanded. And you, you know, it's just nice because you don't have to wait on this stuff to dry like you do the uh, spray on guy coat. And if you put on this stuff properly, like not as much as I am, it won't clog your sandpaper or anything like that. This is the cheaper brand. This is made by Duragold. It's just as good as any of the other stuff, if not better. So nice stuff. So this shape here is a little hard to sand because it's rounded both you know, horizontal and vertical. This is not a super flat plant panel. Actually, it's a little real rounded and most panels are. So it's kind of tough to sand. If you sand this way, you'll get a bunch of choppy marks, really, if you're not careful. You almost have to sand this way, a little bit this way, right? You have to, but you want to mix it up and do it both ways. Recreating this line was a pain, getting that back straight. So these are always kind of pain in the you know what. So, kapow! 
truck bed inside, other than spraying in a bed liner, is done, thankfully. Man, that was a job. You ever scuffed the inside of a truck bed? If you have, I'm sorry. If you haven't, you know, that's good. It's a lot of work. Hard on the fingers, even with an angle grinder. It doesn't make any difference. Used one of an angle grinder with a wire wheel to knock off all the loose rust. And, uh, you know, it looks, looks awesome. Actually, that uh, Speed of Coat T-Rex epoxy primer, pretty good stuff, actually. Laid down really nice. Tore out all the old seam sealer, re-seam sealed it, scuffed it, and then sprayed it. So it is as sealed up as good as the day it was brand new. And it looks good. Looks really good. Kind of impressed, actually. So let me quickly give you my non-professional two cents of advice on spray guns. My brother used to paint cars. I mean, that's what he did. He painted cars. And he, re, he re, I think it was a Binks gravity feed, like pressure pot type spray gun. He did everything with that gun. He changed his nozzles. He would prime, he would paint, and he would shoot the clear all with one gun. And it seems like these days everybody thinks they got to have a gun for every single, one for primer, one for paint, one for clear, and it's just not true. You know, I, I know that the marketing guys, I know that they want you to think that and that, you know, the newest gun is the best. And unless you're a professional, you're probably not going to notice the difference in between this budget model, starting line, you know, entry level HVLP gun and any other one. You could probably get one cheaper than this and it would work just the same. Just my opinion, right? You may get a little more overspray, right? It may not be quite as controllable, but they're almost all identical on their design. So, you know, take it from a guy who doesn't know what he's talking about. I don't think that having multiple guns is all that big a deal. And if you get a gun like this, you can just change the tips, right? You want to spray a thicker material, you know, go with a bigger nozzle. You want to spray something thin, you know, go with a small one. That's that's kind of the deal. You could spend a fortune on paint guns setting up for every single thing when, if you're a beginner, it's really, you know, like myself, I don't paint cars every day. It's easy to fall into that, I need a new tool for every single application. And really, that's just a bunch of uh, marketing 
BS. I heard a guy say the same, basically the same thing that I'm saying uh, the other day. And this dude really does paint cars. That's all he does. And he does it every day. And most of the time he uses, it's an old Binks pressure pot as well, just like my brother did. So, you know, don't fall into that. I think the main thing, to get a good quality paint job, it's not all in the gun. A lot of it is practice. Right, you're not going to buy a good paint job if you're doing it yourself. You have to learn and spray product, get the feel for it, you know, learn, you know, techniques, and uh, that will give you a good paint job. Not buying the best gun on the market is not going to guarantee you a great paint job. All right, that should work. So right here is the worst rust on the whole bed. Well, my coupler's just about wore out. Anyway, what I'm going to do here is uh, just explore a bit with the with the whirly woo here and see how bad it actually is. So between this metal here, this support bracket, and the sheet metal, super close as you can tell. And what would happen is you'd get moisture and dirt and sand up in here, a little piece of rock or mud, whatever, get up in there and it would start rusting. And then the, it, the rust, because it expands, rust jacking, it would close up that gap even more and hold moisture. And it was just like a cycle of failure. Luckily, the other side's in really good shape. This side's not horrible. It just needs cleaned out. What the? Come on. Ground that sides down a bit and twerk fits in there, gives me a little bit of space. 
That's my patch panel. So we just sprayed in a heavy weld through primer, cleaned it up as good as we can, removed, I removed the rust everywhere where the metal was, you know, starting to get any bit thin. You cannot get it all. You just do the best you can and then, uh, you know, patch it and then try to stop whatever process caused it in the future. Right? Be careful. Keep them dry or clean or whatever It was the reason. So I'm going to tack this in and I want just a little gap in between them, between my patch panel and I want this patch panel to be low because I'm going to put filler on it. And uh, right, it's going to be filled and I don't want to warp this metal too much. So there we go, that patch panel actually turned out really good. I think that's going to be just fine. But before I stop and move on somewhere else, I'm going to wipe this with filler. Just to make sure, because while I'm working here, I want to finish here. So I'm going to wipe it, make sure that it's all low, and that's going to look good. And that's it. I'm just going to use standard body filler in there, because, I mean, that's just basically a sheet of metal below the surface. And should hold up just fine. I love the way she just flings those uh, shells. This 
serious about her sunflower seeds. So let me give you a quick rundown on my method from beginning to end on this bed. Now I'm stripping this thing down to bare metal on both sides. The the bedsides are getting completely stripped all the way down because this thing has had a respray on it and it had tons of lacquer paint on it, what I believe was lacquer and lacquer primer. Originally this thing was a burnt orange color, which was quite pretty actually. But somebody had come in in the past, they had stripped off the majority of the factory uh, coating and then applied that uh, the white paint. They actually done a pretty good job. but. Due to me not wanting to have any compatibility issues and not wanting to put anything over this lacquer primer. I'm not using lacquer, you know, going forward. So all that needs to come off so I don't have any, you know, I don't want my body filler to not adhere well and all that. And I know that if I go down to bare metal, I shouldn't have any problems because all of the products that I'm using are designed to uh, be applied to bare metal. So it's a safe bet for me to strip this all the way down. And let me give you a quick rundown on my on my method of madness here. Now I'm wiping the entire bedside. I did both sides. Whether I see damage there or not, wiping from one end to the other with a skim coat of body filler, I'm blocking the bedside down until I hit metal. I'm not done on this side. But pretty much my filler becomes transparent everywhere except for where there's damage or, you know, factory blemishes. They did not... They didn't do that great of a job on these when they stamped them originally from the factory. They do a much better job these days on panels, but if you look around the edges and stuff on this, there's all sorts of pinch marks and stuff from the from the molds where they or from the dies where these were stamped. You know, and to get one of these straight, it takes quite a bit of filler. You know, around the back tail light there, there's you know where that was cut out or stamped there's a slightly raised lip around there and you can clean all that up with you know a light skim of filler then I'm coming back in after I do my filler bodywork in 80 grit come in spray it with a super built polyester primer two or three coats of that stuff and then I block that in 220 paper each step I step down and coarse, coarseness or grit of the paper so the super bill primer gets blocked in 220 and then it's going to get sprayed with a urethane primer and that will get blocked in 400 and then pretty much it'll be ready should be ready for paint and each step kind of hides the scratches from the last right makes sense plus had a lot of welding to do on this bedside and they, both bedsides were cracked right in the wheel wells. I mean, all the common problems this bed had, you know, it's just 30 something years old and uh, needed a complete makeover. So, it'll be nice when it's done, but man, it's a lot of work. So goodness, that was a lot of work to get to this point. But man, I'm glad to have this all sealed up. Uh, around here, exposed metal will rust overnight. So it feels good to have this entire bed sealed up in primer. And I have by no means showed everything that I had to do to this bed. There's just so much, you know, it would be, it's just too much to, to drop on all of you at one time. So let me quickly, bear with me, be a little bit long-winded as quickly as possible. We'll go over all of the things in order that I did to this bed to get it in the condition that you see it. So a lot of you guys see me pressure washed it, get all the goo and stuff off of it. I pulled the wheel wells out, hammered all the dents out of those, hammered all the dents out of the bed floor. I scuffed the underneath of this, this bed and then sprayed it with epoxy primer in an attempt to make it last. I put the wheel wells back in, and then I re-seam sealed the entire inside of the bed. Then I scuffed the inside of the bed, which is not fun at all, and sprayed it with epoxy primer. 
I also replaced this front bed panel with the one out of my old bed because the one that was on this thing had a rust hole in it. And uh, that was a ton of work just to get it cleaned up enough to where it would go in epoxy. <laughs> then I started heavy on the bodywork on the other side and you guys seen how hammered it was. That was a ton of work. About two and a half days to get that other bedside, all the bodywork done on it, filler wise. I also had to do some welding on it. I had a crack on it in the wheel well and then I welded up the holes for the moldings and I did that on both sides and this one had a crack in it too so you know, it was almost the same. Also uh, welded up all the holes on the tops of the bed rails or the bed top here where they had some bed rails I'm guessing and then did all the body work up there and then you know finally got both sides sprayed and the high build polyester primer. Goodness that was a ton of work. But this high build polyester will give me, uh, you know, one more step of blocking so I can get, so I can f refine the body work and hide a lot of the scratches that were, that I left in the body filler. Because I did my body filler work basically in 80 grit sandpaper. And I sprayed it with this high build polyester to kind of seal in all that body work and keep it from showing back up through the paint job. You know, this stuff's awesome, this high build polyester. Now... Once this gets guide coated, it'll get covered with the black coating and then I'll block it all out. Then it will get sprayed with the urethane and then it will get blocked one more time and it should be ready, ready for paint. So maybe next week I'll set this bed on the, on the pickup truck and make sure just because I want to check and make sure that everything's good. And then that truck is getting pretty close Still a little body work and stuff to do, but it's getting pretty close to ready for paint. It's still going to be a while, but it's getting closer. So I think that's it. Someone, oh, I gotta tell you this. Someone is trying to impersonate me. They're not trying, they are. On some website called Telegram. They're saying that people won stuff. And guys, be very careful on the internet. People... There are people out there who are absolute lowlifes who will steal your identity and then try to take advantage of your trusting viewers and uh, try to, you know, get them for something. So unless I tell you personally on video, my face, my lips tell you that I have started some other or on some other platform, don't believe it. Even if you see my little picture and someone typing to you, if it's not me telling you with my lips, don't believe it. So... Sorry to the guys who, you know, fell for it. Uh, it's really easy to do. Um, and I did get several emails telling me that, you know, someone was doing it. So that, that's appreciated. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, it is much appreciated. And I will see you next time.